You gotta earn it. And I did, you know, I wrote raps, I wrote verses, I wrote songs for over a decade and had never earned a penny. And of course, uh, it was- Hold up, how many of you are willing to do that? How many of you are willing to work for free to get your name out there? To build your name and your reputation out there and get paid zero dollars, knowing that you're building equity towards something, that you're gonna get your big break. How many are willing to work for free for 10 years? In the meantime, find another way to pay the bills, but you're willing to work for free to chase a dream, to build a dream, 10 years, a decade, for him to write and produce and provide value to other people before he got any dollar return back to him. Amazing story here. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, I'm gonna be doing a reaction to Rick Ross giving financial guidance and advice on the I Am Athlete podcast. And uh, many of you have been enjoying these because uh, from a faith-based perspective, from an entrepreneurial perspective, from a financial perspective, from that lens, from a leadership lens, that is where these reactions are coming from. So therefore it can help people see money and finance and their faith in a much different way. Let's take a look at this. And, and one thing, bro, I want to ask you, because y'all talking about the swag and all, and hey, Rick, you got your thing, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, he's Dude, low. got $100,000. Look at the chains on this guy. You buy $80,000 chain. You know what I'm saying? And, and athletes and, 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 and rappers, performers, you know what I'm saying? Famous folks got a little bread. Right. Like, when did you know that CEO chain is off the chain, that's off the chain? But like, hold up, look where at do that. you know where to start? Where, where's that threshold of when you can spend? 250 on the chain, 500 on the jewelry. Right. Because these young boys nowadays don't understand. You can't have a million dollars and have $800,000 worth of jewelry. That's just dumb. I'm going to be honest. By the way, let me preface this by saying too as well. I had a conversation with uh, Deion Sanders. I had a conversation um, with a lot of slaveries and athletes. Uh, Chad Ochocinco is very famous for doing this too as well. Because they were players, because they were a brand, they were a persona, a lot of these guys bought fake jewelry, cubic zirconia earrings, cubic zirconia jewelry, just to play the part of this persona that was from a marketing perspective, very attractive to get them the deals and the endorsements and opportunities to open the way because they looked a certain way. So principle of success here, you wanna get the part, you gotta look the part. Now, I'm interested in what this answer is gonna be because when is enough enough or when can you say, listen, I'm gonna buy X amount of dollars for jewelry, for a watch, for a chain. Let's see what Rick Ross has to say. It, it, to me, it depends on the type of life you live in and are you really hustling? Are you gonna spend 100 on a chain, 200 on a chain just to lay up in the bed and let your girl rub your nipples and touch your <laughs> chain? Or are you gonna spend a 200 on a chain investing in yourself and knowing I'm finna go get it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When, when so I for you, you have a goal in mind. You want to get a watch. You want to get a chain. You want to get, you know, I sign your wrist. I don't know what it is. You want to get a car. You want to get a house. If you're going to go spend the money on that, are, are you going to find a way for that money to compound in other things? So in other words, millionaires, they just look to spend a dollar. So when they spend a dollar, how does this come back to them fivefold? How does it come back to them tenfold? How does it come back to them a hundredfold? Isn't in, it just isn't about the look. It isn't just about the image, but how does this present you to get you access? Sadly, people judge a book by its cover. I'm not saying that it's right, but what will get you more access is not that. Because a very interesting proverb when it comes to this. Proverbs chapter 22, verse one, it goes like this. A good reputation and respect are worth more than silver and gold. So it's one thing to present yourself this way, but if you really want to get in and stay in, you better have a good reputation and you better command respect. When I hit my first lick, signed my first deal in 06, I ain't buy a whip for the first year. I ain't want to buy nothing. I said, I, I got to make sure this shit real. Yeah. This is even real. Yeah. I'm coming back every weekend. God damn, is this shit. <laughs> when he's talking, I don't know where the mic is on his body, but that, chain that CEO, you know, that just that boom, it's just like hanging there and it's rubbing across that microphone. It just sounds solid. It can be real dark next year. This Hear it? Year, okay, so this how we gonna do it. We gonna do something else. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's people that question me every day. Jose, you got a hundred cars. Yeah, I do. Why? And I got 400 acres. Yeah, I do. But See, it makes sense. It's relative. I remember, when I was in the Marine Corps and we get back from deployment, we got a pocket full of savings because we weren't doing anything for six months deployed overseas. We weren't doing anything for 12 months deployed overseas. Now we come back, we got 10 stacks, 20 stacks, 30 stacks, just waiting for us to do something with it. 
Anyway, make a long story short, guys would just go out and blow money. Guys would blow money left and right. It would be the funniest thing to see the military barracks in that parking lot the day after deployment. How many stupid things people buy. Cars, stereos, jewelry, and then sadly years later leave the military with nothing to show for. Zero. By the way, that same thing happens to with athletes. The Rolls Royce I just uh, purchased was a former NBA player I just purchased it from. I'm training it in right now and getting another one. Why? Because the relationship in terms of the money I'm spending compared to the what he says, 400 acres, compared to the cash I have in the bank and the business and cash flow that I got coming in and the net worth I have established, buying Rolls Royce, buying chains should be the equivalent of you buying a cheeseburger. Guess what? Somebody just paid me 20,000 to put five of the cars in the front of something just to take some pictures for two hours. So that asset. Right. Or, the, or liability making you money. Oh, it's most definitely. If I'm if I'm moving with it, I'm gonna try my best to get the most out of it. Of course. Why not? Of course. Yeah. Why not? You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna go dress yourself up, if you're gonna invest in yourself, you gotta go and present something and go get some money with it. You know what? Yeah, hundred percent. If you're gonna look the part, you're gonna dress the part, you're gonna act the part, you better get the part. Now that we're here, and I'm glad you're here, and it's speaking from our perspective, and people always seeing a finished product. You know, we play on Sundays and they're watching TV. Right. You ball out, you do your thing. I don't think people understand the work that go into it to reach that pinnacle. Right now, they're seeing you, you're the finished product of Ross. Right. I need you with people listening up and coming, no matter what craft or specifics you want to do, explain to the people at home that see this, the discipline it takes to even reach this part instead of trying to do it quick or trying to find Everybody a quick hustle. Everybody overnight. You can't cut no corners. You can't go and you can't, you know, it ain't gonna happen like that. It's only- I'm, I'm glad that Chad Ochocinco is asking this question. Uh, many years ago, I uh, was working with a guy named Ed Butowski. He's right here in Dallas so when I was up in Chicago, but he's here in Dallas now. And uh, we worked on the first reality show together called The Invested Life. And he was working on a project called ESPN's 30 for 30 Broke, where majority of athletes leave professional sports broke. Here's an interesting stat. 78% of all professional athletes go broke just after three years after retirement. Just three years. Next thing you know, they're working at Starbucks. Next thing you know, they're working a, uh, an odd job, working in corporate America. So when you're in the league, when you're on this platform, today you can really maximize your opportunities. I mean, uh, college students today, because of the opportunity for NCAA players to make money, maximize the platform that you have today. When I was in the Marine Corps, I wish I maximized the platform that I was on today. Sadly, I wasn't looking for a mentor. Sadly, I wasn't reaching out to anybody. I wish now, when I was in, I was reaching out to more people. What should I be doing now while I'm in the military, while I'm in uniform, under contract, that I should be doing for life after the military? Athletes should be asking, what should I be pairing right now? Because if the NFL, the not for long league, the average time of an NFL career is two and a half, three and a half years, what should you be doing to prepare yourself once you sign your first contract and you may not make it to the second contract? What should you financially prepare to do? Because the challenge you got there too as well is you got those forces inside the locker room. You're in the locker room, you just signed a rookie deal. You're making half a million dollars a year after taxes, you're making 250, okay? Because as a professional athlete, you're not an independent contractor. You're not a business, you're paid as a, employee. So in other words, if you're making half a million dollars a year, 35% of your tax is gone. State income tax, 40, 45% of your tax, of your income is taxed. It's gone. So if you're making $500,000, boom, just look at half of it. Half is your income. So for those of you out there that think these athletes are making millions and millions of dollars, half there's that country you see that's reported is actually what they're pulling in as a general rule. So if you're making five hundred thousand dollars as a rookie minimum, you're really pulling in two fifty. What's two fifty a year? Two fifty a year is twenty thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars, twenty one thousand dollars a month. And if you're blowing money, like the star athlete, the star veteran that's on that team, good luck. If you're trying to catch up with them, good luck. They're in a much different financial level than you are, even though you're on the same level playing field on the game of football. You gotta be careful who you hang with because they're gonna force you to spend more money that you don't have because you gotta feel like you gotta catch up with them or you're gonna lose face with them. So very difficult conversation that many people have to have, especially when it comes to money. You're blowing money, everybody's spending money. Who are you hanging with to invest money? One way you're gonna get to it and you gotta earn it. You gotta earn it. And I did, you know, I wrote raps, I wrote verses, I wrote songs for over a decade and had never earned a penny. And of course, uh, it was- Hold up, how many of you are willing to do that? How many of you are willing to work for free 
to get your name out there, to build your name and your reputation out there and get paid zero dollars, knowing that you're building equity towards something, that you're going to get your big break. How many are willing to work for free for 10 years? In the meantime, find another way to pay the bills, but you're willing to work for free to chase a dream, to build a dream. 10 years, a decade for him to write and produce and provide value to other people before he got any dollar return back to him. Amazing story here. How long you wrote for? Over a decade. You know what's yeah, interesting? Had, bro, Hold on, what's, here's what's years, interesting. Like, Chan, Chan, Chan. Decades. Here's what's interesting. When we was playing for the Dolphins 2011, 2012, bro, you could actually say like bro was the hottest artist on the planet. Yeah. Right? Y'all ain't, y'all ain't and had I was dry, though. And, and so look, there would be times, and we, we got this little thing called beefing on the show. We'll talk to you about that later. Right, right, right. There would be times I'd be beefing, I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna slide, I jump in my whip, and I go to bro's house. Right. Right, and we just be me and him chilling. And you said something interesting one night. It was just me. By the way, that beard, impeccable. <laughs> Look at that beard, man. I have some serious beard envy here. I'm the man for the Dolphins, one of the guys. And then this is Rose. And he and you said to me, you said, bro, I, I'm just now getting to the money. Verbatim. Right. You said, I'm just now getting to the money. Right. And I didn't understand that. I'm like, how you just now getting to, what you mean you just now getting to the money, right? Like, you signed your deal when? 2006. And this is a principle called... Delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Proverbs 13, chapter 12 goes, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. There's a whole lot of discipline that goes with delayed gratification. Knowing that you can enjoy right now because the power of delayed gratification in an instant pot world is not a very good conversation. It's not a very easy thing to deal with. A lot of people today want to get rich right now. They want to live their life right now. And so the value and principle here that Rick Ross exemplified in his life, you're going to put work in for a minute. So would you rather put a little bit of temporary sacrifice right now in exchange for permanent happiness later on? The challenge here is a lot of people don't want that temporary sacrifice. And that might be a first season. It might be for a year, a two, three, in his case, 10 years. But is it worth it for the rest of his life? You got to answer that question for the goals and vision that you have for you. 06, I signed the deal. But meaning, uh, the more experience, the more life you live in, you realize it's a much larger playing field that Come you on. even had Come on. visions of. Come on, there you go. So as a youngster, you think that's just like when you a young dude and you first start getting you think you <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes. Until yes. I looked up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, by the way, I wonder who Rick Ross's mentors are. That'd be an interesting conversation. I wonder who he bounces his thoughts and ideas from to get him to start seeing further than his first six inches to a foot in front of his face. I wonder who he talks to. I wonder whose associations are. If you know who that is, please put it in the comment section below. By the way, what is your favorite Rick Ross song? Put it in the comment section below. Love to know what it is. For me, Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, come on. A few months ago, I was like, boy, you doing your thing, boy, you feel me? Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> and so that's just like getting money. Yeah. When you first become a millionaire, you know, for the first time, you really think, oh boy, it's on now. Yeah. But it ain't. Right. That's just like being in your position. When you, you know, when we first crossed our first cash flow million, I used to wear this wristband. It's still to this day, it's because it's inside my wrist now, it's no longer on it, it's in it. And uh, Damon John wrote this book called The Power of Broke. And we've interviewed Damon John a couple of times of uh, how to get financially ahead. I've interviewed him for Miller Coors uh, Tap the Future program where we're investing back into the budding entrepreneurs in our community. And we invested uh, and we interviewed him to give back to our military veterans. And uh, part of the conversation is power of broke. So sometimes when you cross a certain benchmark, cash flow wise or savings wise or goal wise or milestone wise, we have a tendency to slow down. We have a tendency to say, okay, man, um, I'm going to do this now because I'm going to chill because I reached this, this Mecca, this dream goal. And I remember Patrick telling me, hey, Matt, Sheena, if your goal and your vision was about hitting a certain milestone, financially speaking, and your vision was about money, boom, you've reached it. Your pinnacle reached. Congratulations. So in other words, your dream can be bought. But if your vision is grander and greater than that, then no dollar amount can ever buy you to reduce and sell out your dream. In other words, you get to certain milestones, get certain pickles, your dream keeps growing and growing and growing. And next thing you know, it's not about money, even though it is. But it's further than that because you need the funding and the finances to help you support and build that dream further. But if it's just about money, you have a small dream, you've 
been bought. Sign that first check. When you get out there on that field, you get that extension. You met all y'all done got real money. You understand? But guess what? Y'all just not finna get to the real money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real money. Bro, Port of Miami what was that 06? That was 06. Yeah, bro. And this and is 2012 when you told me that you just got to the money? Yeah. But what he was saying, though, what he was telling, no, no, talking no, no, to me about yeah. was like... He's reinvesting like whole, back into himself. Uh, Lil Wayne, he... I wow. never see a lot of people don't know the decision you are making behind closed doors. Everybody's going out there, they're just living it up, but you just work your plan. Rick Ross obviously was working his plan. Understood is what you was telling me was there's only a few artists in the game that really make money. So everything you wow. see ain't real. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That was the first time somebody put me on game when, when it comes to the entertainment business. And and in the in the exact perspective I'm speaking from is it's a lot of people that we look at and you may feel this brand worth a hundred million dollars. But after I got in the game, I seen a lot of different times. That wasn't the case. You understand? Nope. So when are we going to change this and really make it what it's about? Mm. When I say a boss, I really mean I come from the mud with I, it. I can't get all the money I by myself. Boss. I can't start every company and run them every company. Right. But guess what I can do? I can partner up and we could do this. Strategic partnership. Yeah, we could do that. Yep. Yeah. yeah this is the position I could play. You understand? Right, right, right. And, and after we done, you know. Yeah, this. By the way, this reminds me of the reaction video we did with Yogati, right? That's the same. That's the same play. You build your capital up to this point, you participate in all these different businesses, but you capitalize, you partnership, you have strategic partnerships in it, you put your money where your mouth is, boom, diversify, you have a team behind you, and you get involved in many different things. But you gotta make your money first. You gotta make that money first before you do it, because oftentimes people try to get, divide their money too fast, and you know, they're trying to get multiple streams of income too fast, too early in their career, and instead of creating one Mississippi, massive, massive Mississippi river of cash flow first, they end up with multiple trickles and get back down to square one, very quickly. Did this several times, just like right now. Uh, His investment in shout liquor. out to my partner, Brett Barish, and I appreciate him letting me be involved in this, but you know, in the last, in several months, this is the fastest growing rum in the world right now. No, you know I, thought, I thought the rosé was actually the hottest thing you got. No, nah, Bel Air, Luke, Luke Bel Air, most definitely. It's ram that sold out everywhere. Yeah. That's that, that's that hard no, work. No. Uh, this, this reminds me of uh, my wife and I building our savings, building our revenue, so therefore we have money to invest. And it reminds me of our investment into Uncle Nearest Whiskey, which right now today is the fastest growing whiskey company in the history of America, which is a board run by multicultural women and the only CEO of a spirits company, a liquor company that's run by a black woman, Fawn Weaver. But because we had savings and we had focused on one thing and to capitalize and, and not overspend, we had money to invest. And that's what we want more of you to do. We want more of our community to do out there and be investors in businesses in our local communities because trying to catch up and look the part to try to be the part, you pop open the hood and ain't the part. And it's a lot of fakeness because it's marketing in a community, not net worth building. Oh, that's that's great facts. Team. Quarantine. And the number one, <laughs> that number one product. Oh, the, you know, the quarantine. Most yeah, quarantine, quarantine, bro. I went to the little package store around the corner Ain't and we had a little, and, and I went in the first, so the first week of quarantine, we would have hit around March. And I went and I got all the Bel Air, and that was the first time I bought it, bro. I, I, so I'm late. But it's so in March love. I went it's and got love. it, and I was like, "Woo!" And Chef Nancy, know she know like you know on the weekends, little brunch and stuff. I was sipping on my Bel Air, it was smooth. I'm a rosé guy, you know what I mean? And then I went back the next month, and they said, "Yo, this is the hottest thing. We can't even keep it in the store." Mm. And I just smiled like, "Damn!" You and know what I'm me, saying? And to me, that's the reward of the hard work. That's and of right. course, I'm just happy to see. You know, the small role I played in to see, you know, the streets really rocking with it. So you got to understand my confidence in building the brand is through the roof. I believe that, you know, if we sat down and said, yo, we finna do this boxer. We finna remix these Cheerios and put the dollar signs with the marshmallows. Oh, we finna go through the roof. So every ethnic background, black, white, brown, yellow, you name it. Every one of our ethnic backgrounds and socioeconomic upbringings all has its reservations, all has its definition of what they think rich is, all has its definition of what they think success is. The biggest thing you gotta figure out is what your definition is and the lifestyle that you wanna live. Be clear about the type of life and options that you and your family wants to have and in your opinion needs to have and what type of work necessary to get a financial platform to get you there. These guys' platform is sports, music. Yours might be your lawn care services, yours might be your real estate business, yours might be your insurance business, yours might be your, your, your law platform, whatever that is. 
That is your vehicle to get. Some of you need a new vehicle because the vehicle that you've been running on is broke. Especially if it's just tied to a, a typical nine to five job, you have no upside potential to do above and beyond at that job than everybody else does. So it might be an opportunity for you today, especially with inflation at 8.3% in inflation and things just cost more money. I think I'm, uh, uh, Verizon and, and some of these cell phone companies are adding an economic adjustment charge to their cell phone bills. Are you kidding me? This is the result of saying we need a $15 an hour raise. This is the result of corporate America now getting dinged for and getting squeezed. Now, guess what? They're passing that cost on to everybody else. That's what's going on. So when you're looking at entrepreneurship, you're looking at business to take control of your financial future and figure out what that is. And I think for some people, a major benefit that a lot of people have looked over for decades is working for somebody, working under somebody, finding out what their moves are, finding out what their conversations are, finding how they negotiate. For example, how many of you guys remember that movie, American Gangster? with uh, Frank Lucas, played by Denzel Washington. For 10 plus years, Frank Lucas watched the mafia mob boss with his moves, watched his negotiations, watched how he gave back to the community, watched his sit downs, watched people coming in and coming out and the tough decision that that mafia mob boss had to make. And then when that mafia mob boss died, guess who took over the mob? The Italian mob at that. The first black man to run the Italian mob, Frank Lucas. But he knew the moves because he studied under, it worked under, and the patience to do that on the Italian mafia mob boss when Frank Lucas took over. For some of you who's experiencing, man, I might be doing something great. And myself, I'm not talented. I worked closely with somebody, under somebody for many, many years. And to some extent, I still do. I got no shame in that. Even though I'm 48 years old, I'm still working under somebody to some extent because I need to study their moves because I know there's a conversation that they're having that I'm privileged to be a part of without having to risk my own time, reputation, and money to figure it out all 100% completely on my own that I can learn from many different mentors that I have in my life, learn their moves. And the people I associate with still to this day, when I was 20 years old, I was still associating with people 20 years older than me. Now I'm 48 years old, I'm still associating with people much more older than me. Why? Because they've got a whole life body of work that I can glean from and find out what moves I need to make and avoid a lot of mistakes, pain and frustration, and furthermore, not waste money and time doing so. So the question for you is, are you doing that too also in your life? Potentially you should have those conversations if you're not doing that already. So with that being said, I'd love for you to check out these two other reaction videos here that we've done previously. I love your thoughts. Put it in the comment section below. What are your thoughts, questions, your feedback? Will you agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put in the comment section below. Who else do you want me to react to? Also put that in the comment section below. If you feel that this video has provided some value to you, please consider hitting like. If you've watched a couple of our videos, please consider hitting subscribe if you have not done so already and also hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Hey, don't forget, we got some merch on our site, Seven Figure Squad. Please don't forget to pick up your merch to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.